Let's talk about these guys. Maybe they're doing good. Maybe they're not. We want to talk all about it. Nate, who is the first player you want to discuss tonight? All right. First player I want to discuss is the current wide receiver three on the season, Mike. I got a bunch of this guy on my teams. We were talking about him before the season started. Hope you got him. Chris Godwin, currently 71 overall in keep trade cut. Wide receiver 29, which is, I would say, pretty high for a guy that's uh, getting close to his 30s on keep trade cut. Uh, usually we're pretty, you know, we, we love the young wide receivers. But Chris Godwin putting up plenty of points, currently averaging 21.4 points per game. Stat line for the season, 21 receptions, 253 yards, and three touchdowns. Mike, he's averaging 6.7 yak rec on the season. <sighs> Love that. Actually, yak rec as a wow, whole is up. Fuck. Yak rec as a whole is up across the board. I think that there is a connection there with that because we've seen this, the double safety, the too high safety look. It's causing everyone to throw underneath, which means, hey, players are getting more opportunities to create yards after the catch. Chris Godwin's doing that very well and getting peppered with targets out of the slot, which is what we talked about all offseason. He was moving back into the slot. He hasn't been there for a couple of years. And he was going to be the big benefactor of that offense. And boy, it is happening. Love the statistics he's putting up. Love the production he's putting up. And I don't think this is a you know a flash in the pan like Adam Thielen last year. The Bucks are a good team. Baker Mayfield's a good quarterback. And he has got a good uh, wide receiver across from him that has been productive already. And he's shown that he can, uh, the two of them can coexist. So I love what I've seen from Chris Godwin so far. So Mike, I brought a couple trades here. Let's talk about them. Jordan Addison and a third round pick. For Chris Godwin. Yeah, Addison's been hurt. And, you know, Sam Darnold, again, proving me wrong. Uh, but he, we've seen this before from Sam Darnold. And like I always say, when you're buying a receiver at tight end, you're buying a quarterback. Uh, we like J.J. McCarthy long term. But give me Chris Godwin right now. So, yeah, I, I agree. You know, as much as I love Jordan Addison, I do have some question marks moving forward with the Vikings offense. Although Sam Darnold, like you said, has looked pretty good. Um, but is there enough there for Hawkinson when he comes back? Is there there for Addison when he comes back in addition to Justin Jefferson? And Jalen Naylor uh, kind of showing up in the last week or two. So next trade I got for you, Mike, Deontay Johnson, who just popped off this past week against the Raiders, is a second-round pick for Chris Godwin. Well, look, Deontay Johnson coming off an eight-catch for 122-yard and one touchdown game. I get it. I don't know if I like putting the second on top of it. Mm. it's a tough one it is a tough one because I, I i really liked the addison in a third but then it's one of those things they go back to bryce young at some point and deontay takes a, a fall off again so yeah you know what I'd, I'd probably especially if i'm contending if i if i'm if i'm a question mark to make the playoffs and my team's not that strong i probably wouldn't you know because then i would want that second as well but if i think i have a strong chance i'll, I'll make the deal all right, I'm going to favor the Deontay and a second-round pick side. Yes, you will. Of course I would because I'm a huge Deontay believer. And I'll take that second-round pick. I think this is pretty fair. I think it's, I, I understand why it was tough, though. I do think it's a tough um, ask because it feels like, you know, if you're competitive, you stick with the guy you know has had more proven production, small sample size so far. But it is, you know, you kind of want to lean with Chris Godwin. But I do like the Deontay in a second there. And then here's a straight-up trade. Chris Godwin. Or David Montgomery? This is tough. David Montgomery is a running back 10 on the season. It's looking good. There's positional scarcity there. We know that, especially the running back position this year is just all over the place. But that being said, this is the wide receiver three on the season. I think in a vacuum, yes, but this is very situational. You know, if David Montgomery is all you have, you can't make the deal. You got to start yeah. somebody at the running back position. He'd tell you, everybody, you have to. Yeah, this feels like an easy one where you say, oh, whatever position, I just need more. Um, yeah. But, you know, we're here to do a bit more than that, I guess. Right. So um, I'm going to say, you know, I'm also going to take I'm going to take Chris Godwin um, just in a, in a vacuum, like you said, because, hey, wide receiver three production. I don't think he ends up wide receiver three on the year, but he I, I could see him putting together wide receiver one season if Mike Evans doesn't really kind of take over. Um, Mike Evans can still have plenty of a good season, finish top 24 himself hit a thousand yards as you know he's going to do. But uh, Chris Godwin, you know, he's getting a lot of receptions. We love that. He's a PPR target. And uh, I, I could see him finishing top 12. So I'll stick with Chris Godwin. Let's get to my guy. And that's Indianapolis Colts wide receiver, Michael Pittman Jr. I'm frustrated, Nate, as I'm sure you are as well. And all of you okay. out there in listener or viewer land, 11 catches for 88 yards and no touchdowns on the season. But by contrast, 
Nate, his teammate Alec Pierce, nine catches, 225 yards, and two touchdowns. Yes, I understand. Pierce is a deep threat guy. Anthony Richardson's got a big arm. But Michael Pittman Jr., for all intents and purposes, is the better wide receiver, just not showing it so far. So what is the problem? Is it Anthony Richardson? Is it the scheme? Look, through three games last year, Pittman had 25 catches for 230 yards and one touchdown. This is a huge drop-off. Now, Anthony Richardson only played one of those games fully. That was week one, got knocked out in week two, and was an active week three. But Pittman was still eight catches for 97 yards and one touchdown in that game. Is this a regression for Anthony Richardson? Is Michael Pittman just in a slump? I don't know. We still believe in the talent. Let's look at the trades. I saw one for 225 seconds. Yeah, I'll take Pittman for 225 seconds. Um, you know, I think his value is still like around a first because he's a very good wide receiver still and should be the wide receiver one on that team. I don't foresee Alec Pierce keeping it up. Um, It'd be crazy but, if you did. <laughs> but I don't know if I'd want to pay a first right now, but two seconds, I'll do that. Yeah, I feel a little bit more comfortable with that as well. Yeah. Um, here's another one. Michael Pittman for Deontay Johnson and Jordan Mason. Hey. I think I know which side you're leaning. You got my attention there. I'll take a, a wide receiver who I don't think Deontay is really any older than Michael Pittman Jr. Um, I think right. He probably about the same age. Older. Might be a year older, but that's it. And then I get Jordan Mason, like who I said on the last podcast, you know, CMC is over in Germany. I don't know how, how long it is until he comes back. So give me Jordan Mason. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna take that side as well, as much as I like Michael Pittman. If you get a guy who, look, maybe Andy, Andy Dalton's a starting quarterback the rest of the year, we don't know. And I'm not saying Deontay Johnson's going to have a week like that every week, but if he's more consistent, you're going to be okay with that. And Michael Pittman is 26, Deontay Johnson's 28. Right. Now, however, Michael Pittman is almost 27. I was say, isn't he almost 27, though? And Deontay Johnson is 28 years and 81 days old. So it's really like a month, like a year and a little bit more than that. So we're we're splitting hairs there. So <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna take the Deontay Johnson Jordan Mason side as well because Jordan Mason could end up being an entire year fill-in for you. Here's the last one. We got a, a straight up trade. We love those. Michael Pittman for Tank Dell. Yeah, this is a good one. because This, this one's is, tough. That's why I put tough. it on here. Yeah, this is tough. And I'm looking at Michael Pittman, um, who hasn't scored more than eight fantasy points so far in a game. Um, Houston, uh, first week one against Houston, 7.1. Week two against Green Bay, 5.1. Week three against Chicago, 7.6. I know Tank Dell hasn't had uh, the greatest start to a season either. Um, Michael Pittman sitting at wide receiver 70 right now. Tank Dell sitting at wide receiver 61. Um, he did break 10 points, actually. He had 11.2 this past week against Minnesota. I'm going to go with Tank Dell here. Um, a little bit younger. I think what we're doing here is we're buying the quarterback. And I have a lot more confidence in C.J. Stroud as a passer moving forward than I do in Anthony Richardson as a passer. Um, still under 50% completion rate. A guy that just hasn't had a lot of game time. And I know, I know that he is an incredible athlete. He can do some amazing things in the field. You know, we saw that bombed Alec Pierce week one. He threw it 60 something yards in the air. I mean, Mike, like Michael Pittman Jr. should be doing better, but I don't think Michael Pittman's the problem here. I think Anthony Richardson is. So when I'm comparing these twos, I'm going to go with Tank Dell because I don't think CJ Stroud's going to be a problem for him. Give me Tank Dell here in this vacuum. I believe in CJ Stroud more long term than I do Anthony Richardson. Nate, who do you have next? All right, next up, I got Travis Etienne of the Jacksonville Jaguars, currently RB11 on keep trade cuts, sitting at 53 overall. On the year, 36 rushes for 164 yards and two touchdowns at 4.6 yards per carry, and also has nine receptions for 38 yards through the air. Uh, pretty decent little season so far. Um, hasn't been incredible, but there, you know, then again, the Jaguars as a whole have not been incredible. Um, yes. they've been very disappointing actually. Uh, so Travis Etienne sitting at RB 22, um, on the year right now. I, I, I wanted to talk about him tonight because I don't really know what I'm doing with Travis Etienne myself. Um, you know, RB 11, you know, he's not as expensive as he was in the off season when I had him as a kind of a sell or, you know, I'm too expensive for me getting back down to the RB 11, you know, he is getting plenty of the bulk of the work. Um, Tank Bigsby, though he has come back in and they talked about him in the offseason is getting more touches. He hasn't really got a lot of touches yet. Um, not sure if it's because they want to keep giving Etienne all the touches or because of a shoulder injury that Tank Bigsby had coming into the week that had him miss last game, um, or essentially missed last game. I believe he played like two snaps, didn't touch the ball, but had that shoulder injury. So I don't know what that workload looks like going forward, but 
Travis Etienne, he's been somewhat efficient at 4.6 yards per carry, but is sitting 29th in the league right now with only five missed tackles forced. Isn't really creating a lot of yards after contact or making people miss. So it's, it's convoluted, I would say, with Etienne. He was putting up decent production with a not so decent offense at the moment. So what are we doing with Travis Etienne? Let's look, let's look at the prices. Uh, I saw him go straight up for Green Bay Packers wide receiver Jaden Reed. What are you thinking here, Mike? I want Jaden Reed. I think that's a good answer because Jaden Reed, um, right now, I believe he's second in the league with Yak Rec. He's like at 12 yards after the catch per reception right now. Uh, he's over three with yards per route run. Jaden Reed's having a really good year, and Jordan Love hasn't even played that much, so I'm about it. He feels mid, but I don't mean that in a negative way necessarily because he's still been productive for fantasy football. Just right. I don't feel like he gives you that upside that some of these other running backs give you. Correct. So with that being said, how about a 2025 first round pick? Depends on if you need a running back, huh, Mike? Uh, I hate to do it, but yeah, yeah. if you need a running back and that's the going rate, can I get some, a little something back? Yeah, I definitely to try to get something back. You know what I mean? I definitely feel like I want something back as well, but hey, we're in the season now and it's not cheap to get a starting running back. And ETN, you know, as big of a Tank Bigsby fan I am, there hasn't been a lot of, you know, flags going up that Bigsby's going to take over this workload. So as long as ETN's going to get the touches he's getting, I think you can move first round pick for him. It yeah. doesn't really excite me, but I'm not like upset about it either. All right, Mike, I got the last one for you. I think this one's kind of funny. What about last? What about Travis ETN's teammate, Trevor Lawrence? Straight up. The two of these guys are right next to each other and keep trade cut. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a no-win situation for this year, but long term, <laughs> I would want Trevor Lawrence. Quarterbacks tend to play more than running backs do. Um, especially with guys getting banged up. If Trevor Lawrence is your quarterback two, quarterback three in a super flex. I'll do that. Yeah, I, I would also as well always lean quarterback in most situations. Though Trevor Lawrence has been a little disappointing. Um, yes. certainly not just this year, but kind of overall his career. I'm still a pretty big Trevor Lawrence fan, but we need to see that next step here soon. I got a running back for you, and that is Denver running back Javante Williams. Hey, again, I'm frustrated. I keep coming to the bat for this guy, and he keeps screwing me over. He's been really inefficient, by the way. 24 carries, 52 yards, no touchdowns. That's 2.2 yards per carry. Gross. 10 catches, 77 yards, no touchdowns. So uh, slightly better through the air. Not great. But hey, in all fairness, Jaleel McLaughlin, not lighting it up either. 18 carries, 40 yards, one touchdown, six receptions for eight yards. That's gross. By the way, the leading running back rusher for the team, Bo Nix actually leads the whole team with 107 yards and two touchdowns. But the leading running back rusher is Tyler Beatty with 10 carries for 86 yards and zero touchdowns. So, hey, there you go. Throw out a waiver claim for Tyler Beatty if yeah. you want do we wait it out? This is a team that's still in transition. You got Sean Payton coming into year two. We got, um, you know, Bo Nix in his rookie season. Javante Williams not going to be there forever. That's the thing. Let's not see what he's after doing. this year. Yeah, that's for sure. But he'll be somewhere. And I think he's good enough to at least earn a shot at a starting role. So what do we do? Let's find out. Uh, we got one a 25 second. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the 25 second side. I think I might right now, too. I'm pretty pretty low on Javante right now. It has been poverty fantasy football out there in Denver. How about this one? Javante Williams for Jerome Ford and a 25 fourth. <laughs> Man, I don't like making that trade. Here's the thing. He's but, not going for anything good right now, but Javante Williams, where he was drafted and where he was getting traded for in the offseason, you would make it think you would think otherwise. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm you know, Javante Williams obviously is not a main piece of my starting lineup at this point. Right. Jerome Ford, if I'm strong in other areas, Jerome Ford could, could be a stand in at my running back position, uh, you know, performing better than Javante is right now. So not that I love either offense, but I'll take Jerome Ford. And here's another guy breaking my heart, ripping it right out of my chest. Javante Williams for Zamir White straight up. This is a ooh trade for sure. Yeah. I don't want either side. Can I just get like a, a pick or some other random player. If you're making me choose though, I'm going to go with Javante Williams because he has the draft capital, which I know you're like, Oh, well he's about to go into a second contract. It matters. It matters. La Laquan Treadwell is still getting opportunities out there because he was a first round pick. Like Javante Williams has day two draft capital. 
Zamir White doesn't, and they both kind of crap right now. So and it's Javante for me by a slim margin because his main backup, Jalil McLaughlin's not really doing much. Whereas Zamir White, Alexander Madison's actually showing yeah. a little bit when he's getting opportunities. So we see that there could be some sort of transition there, possibly if Zamir White doesn't step it up. So it's Javante Williams by a hair. Nate, who is your next player? My next player, somebody that kind of uh, went off on Monday Night Football a little bit when Jaden Daniels was throwing the ball. Terry McLaurin finally got some production out of him. Um, currently sitting at 114 overall and wide receiver 41, Mike. I think this might be the lowest that Terry McLaurin has been on Keep Trade Cup um, since Keep Trade Cup probably came out. Wide receiver 41, pretty cheap right now. Um, currently on the season, sitting with 12 receptions for 139 yards and a touchdown. Not great, but overall, you know, not too bad through three games. The problem is four receptions and 100 yards and that touchdown came last night against the Bengals in the first two games of the season. Terry McLaurin had a combined eight catches for 39 yards, and that's it. What McLaurin are we getting moving forward is the McLaurin we saw with Jaden Daniels last night when he only had two incompletions. I believe it was 21 for 23, a 90% completion rate, the highest ever for an NFL rookie um, in their rookie season in one game. So Jaden Daniels looks really good all of a sudden. Is that going to continue, or do we just get to see one of his best rookie games? Um, you know, I have a lot of questions about the commander's offense, but McLaurin, you know, they're using him downfield. And when he's – and Jaden Daniels is a pretty good downfield passer. So if they can continue to make this work, this could be pretty productive. Uh, Terry McLaurin right now has a career-high A dot of 14.7. So, like I said, he's being used pretty far uh, down the field. But um, running a lot of sprints, too, because he's got a career-low yards per route run right now of 1.46. So, obviously, if he produced a little bit more, that would go up. Um, so I, I'm not sure where I'm at with Terry McLaurin either. I like to bring these guys to the table so we can talk about them, Mike. Um, found an interesting trade here. First round pick for Terry McLaurin and a second. If you're making that trade, you're likely a contending team. So it's likely a later pick anyway. Mm -hmm. So to get T-Mac and a second on top of it, I'll do that. Yeah. See, this that, that's the fun thing, Mike. See, if you know that much, if you're, you're that aware of these picks. All right, you're moving a first round pick. You're probably a contender if you're trading for Terry McLaurin. So you're trading a late first, hopefully. Hopefully. You're getting Terry McLaurin. You're probably trading this first round pick to a rebuilding team. So their second round pick is probably going to be early. You might have picked up Terry McLaurin for like moving down five picks come come May. Love that. Uh, the next one I got here, um, Terry McLaurin for a second and a throw-in player. Not too much of a throw-in player, a decent player still. Um, either Dontavian Wicks or Bucky Irving. So one of those two guys in the second round pick for Terry McLaurin. McLaurin. McLaurin over the second round pick and one of those guys. All right. Yeah, um, I mean, you're essentially paying a second for Terry McLaurin. You're paying a second in question marks yeah. for Terry McLaurin. We like those other players, but we also like proven production, which McLaurin has. Yeah, um, I would not do Wicks in a second for McLaurin just because we haven't really seen much from Wicks this year, um, and, and Reed's been looking so good. But I, I am going to consider the Irving, Bucky Irving, and a second-round pick for Terry McLaurin with how that backfield is currently turned. Yeah. Um, I think that is that could be worth your while if you need a running back. I think Bucky Irving's a pretty good. Uh, th I wouldn't really want to say dart throw right now because I think he's better than a dart throw, uh, but he has a lot of upside moving forward. And then, Mike, here's the last trade I brought to the table. Straight up, Terry McLaurin or Devin Singletary? You know, Devin Singletary has been playing some pretty good ball this, this year. He's actually been helping me out a lot, and the Giants won their first game of the year over the Cleveland Browns. Could have had another touchdown if he wanted it. I don't know if you saw that he slid down because there was like a minute left in the game. He had a breakaway breakaway run and slid down the two yard line rather than scoring again. Yeah, um, this one's a little tougher for me because positional scarcity. Yeah, but in the vacuum, I do lean Terry McLaurin. Oh, okay, I'm actually going to lean um, Devin Singletary here because of the positional value. Okay, and I, I, I hey Devin Singletary has been doing really well with the Giants, and that team doesn't look god awful like I thought they would. And I'm talking about Chicago tight end Cole Komet. Hey, listen, I know everyone's talking about Caleb Williams and what's going on with DeAndre Swift and DJ Moore, but we got the tight end three on this season, everybody. So look, this is not the way it's been. Normally, it's Travis Kelsey, Kittle, Mark Andrews. Check out the top five tight ends. This is why it's important to keep things turning over because things change year to year. Number one, Dallas Goddard. In all fairness, he wouldn't be if he didn't just have that huge game in New Orleans. Number two, 
Brock Bowers. Number three, Cole Komet. Four is Trey McBride. And five is Isaiah Likely. Nate, do you know where Travis Kelsey is on this list? Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, he's at the very bottom of the list on my screen at 22. Tight end 22. Absolute insanity. I expect that to change by season's end, but still, my man Cole Komet. 14 catches, 122 yards, and one touchdown. Again, tight end three on the season. Caleb Williams doing something right, targeting a good player. Let's talk about it. Guess what? He's affordable. People aren't thinking about Cole Komet. What have I always said? What is the best thing for a young quarterback? A security blanket. That's a good mm -hmm. tight end. You could get him, and these trades happen. So if you have a problem with them, you could DM the guy at Fantasy Calc for putting them on his site. A 25 third. Yeah, that trade happened two days ago. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good trade for Cole Komet. Now, I will say, Mike, before we go any further, you mentioned Dallas Goddard and how he wouldn't be tight end one if it wasn't for going off this past week. Yeah, he had um, like one hundred and sixty or seventy yards. Yeah, ridiculous. Like that. We have to say the same for Cole Komet because, believe me, I have plenty of Cole Komet, and coming into this week, I was not very excited about it. He did have twenty five point seven fantasy points against the Colts. He had 10 receptions for 97 yards and a touchdown. So what I'll say is this. <laughs> if you look at the top five, here's why this is more impressive because I, I do get it. He mm. has zero plays of over 20 yards on the season. True. Dallas Goddard has five. Brock Bowers has four. Trey McBride and Isaiah Lakely each have one. So we're talking this is just a consistent thing with him, which is part of the reason. But I see what you're saying, though. Yeah. I mean, I like Cole Komet, believe me. So I do, too. And this continues. But I did want to throw that out there since we mentioned it with Goddard. Um, but, yeah, third, easy. So go ahead with your second trip. Yeah. Jerry Judy? Yeah, I think I'll... I'll... Positional scarcity. Tight ends. See, and, and tight end premiums, oh. obviously, Komet, you know, over Jerry Judy. But not so you know let me check what jerry duty did this past week because i know that coming into the weekend um he had been pretty steady i believe he had like over 10 points in every single game that he had played in at this point so he's currently at 41 wide receiver 41 four receptions 27 yards against the <laughs> giants oh man you know it's so weird because the browns are one of the most pass happy offenses right now and they have the worst quarterback in the league yeah so, they do I guess I'll take Cole Komet. I'm taking Cole Komet until the Browns get a real quarterback. <laughs> I don't want anything to do with Jerry Judy. And then here's one. Got to think about this one a little bit more. Kyle Pitts for Cole Komet and a 26 first. So that 20 at first is out a little bit. And by the way, Kyle Pitts, he is your tight end 10 on the season. So still a tight end one, just down a little bit low. Kyle Pitts. Is Kyle Pitts for you? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I'm all about that value. I'm actually still going to go Kyle Pitts, though. I don't want to wait a year, that extra year. So I'll still lean Kyle Pitts. Hopefully um, he can turn it around a little bit more and do better than his 105 yards and one touchdown in the season. He should have a good career ahead of him, though I think we've been saying that for a couple of years now.